welcome to the Driver's Voice podcast. I am your host, Trudy Reese Deans. Hope you guys are enjoying your 2021 this year, even though it's been, what, 20 odd days or we're slowly getting into February time now with this podcast being released. But I hope you guys are doing okay and everything is going all right with you. And I hope you guys are really enjoying these podcasts as I keep going. And also, it's going to be the first year anniversary soon. So I'm really looking forward to that one. But the episodes are going to keep coming in. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel. And I'll get more to you as soon as possible. But without uh, without further ado, I gotta bring in a next guest, and the guests keep coming in, you know. And uh, a lot of my mates have been asking me, "Come on, Reese, when are you gonna bring a Barrytown player on again?" Now, the last time I did bring one on, I asked uh, Kay McClagan to come on the show. Unfortunately, he, he couldn't because he was he's busy. You know, he had uh, other commitments, which is fine, which is fair enough. But um, luckily, I uh, bought one of my old podcasts from the archives from my bro radio days. Uh, brought it in and uh, it was basically how we talked about Kane's uh, past career and everything so it was it was really good to say the least but now it's another Barrytown player and for the Merthyr Town fans you can actually either stay because he has played for Merthyr or you can go but uh, it's none other than uh, Barrytown player Curtis McDonald. Curtis how's it going buddy? Yeah morning good to be on. <laughs> I know literally morning. Oh, <laughs> first guest to the morning one Fleming Eck. 10 a.m. No uh, kids, I take you then. <laughs> no, no. Well, um, oh yeah. Well, the thing is, for me, I, I, I haven't got kids at all yet. So, uh, I mean, I, I've been with my missus for five years now, and well, nearly five years on Valentine's Day, and I've been engaged for I think nearly two years now, and we just lost count. I mean, me yeah. and, <laughs> me and her were debating about it last night, thinking, hmm, how 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 long has it been now? It feels like a hundred years <laughs> some of the times, but yeah. I but, think um, I've been engaged like a year and a half now, so oh, is it? you're not the only one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I th- I thought that we can uh, start off with Barry Town first because you know me being a Barry Town fan, you obviously you being a Barry Town player. I thought we started from there, and then we go on to Cardiff City, and you playing for Forest Green Rovers. Got a lot of questions about Forest Green Rovers actually because you seem to keep going back to that club, which is uh, <laughs> it, it seems to be a thing. But um, the the one thing I really want to know about when you came to Barry Town, I, I think it goes without saying that, you know, you, you know a few of the players there, you know, you played with some of them, whether it was in the Cardiff City days or Chippenham or whatever. But what was the main reason for you to come to Barry? Because I think it was a worst kept secret because you, you were playing and it was on social media and then, and everyone's saying, it's going to be a big signing. We, we know who it is, you know, because we see you <laughs> playing on the field. Um, it's just... I spoke to Gavin a number of times over the last couple of years and just had them materialised. Um, I just had, had a baby boy um, four months ago and obviously the attraction of moving closer to home and not travelling over the bridge as, as often is was a big factor. And like you say, a few of the boys, well, pretty much half the squad I already knew from uh, previous clubs or play, playing at or played again. So it was, uh, yeah, it was an easy decision really. Was it was there a a way of doing it to get the transfer going? Because of, of course you were, I think you were at Chippenham before you came to to Barry. So was there someone from within the squad that's gone come to Barry? You know, I think you could be a, a a useful player for us, or was it just Gavin? You know, approaching you saying, "Look, you're a good quality player. You got the experience. I think you need you." kind of someone that we needed and in all honesty and this is as a Barry Town fan even we were most of the supporters were going we need to, you know we need someone with the experience to get that mixture going you know to push for for, for Europe uh, or for you know to get to the Welsh Premier League titles and everything so was it was it a player's uh, influence on you or was it Gavin or was it just it, your it, no it definitely wasn't a one-way thing like like um, from Gavin and players I was interested in coming myself Obviously, with the attraction of the boys and how well Barry had been doing over the last couple of years. Um, obviously, I spoke to Gav and he said he was interested. I was interested. So it wasn't much of a big decision to... I was obviously... My contract at Chittenham had finished. So I was a free agent anyway. And um, the attraction of moving closer home and playing at this level was, was attractive. So, with, with that in mind as well, um, you know... Uh, you haven't heard of us uh, singing or chanted yet, which is a bit of a problem because of the COVID and that. But hopefully one day, you know, it, it will come. But you did get to hear a, 
I, I don't know what I, I can't remember what game it was. I know it was Catherine Jewett, I think. I, I, I yeah, can't remember. Yeah. yeah, you heard some of us in the car park, you know, because there was a yeah, bit of a fan. There, yeah, yeah, I was suspended <laughs> for that one, unfortunately. But uh, oh, no, yeah, I didn't so notice you all there. Yeah, I remember you were walking past. Like, yeah, oh, but Plymouth, <laughs> this is the early morning. This is why I got a cup of yeah. tea. Yeah, Sunday, you should have done it in the afternoon after Sunday <laughs> lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be, I would have been knocked out with my Sunday roast after that, man. Yeah, talking uh, about. <laughs> but, um, with, with uh, I wanted to mention this one particular game uh, because I wanted to know from your experience because a lot of um, I, like I said, I, I don't know if you played this game because I know that the, the transfer and the, I know you were sort of on trial with us at the time and everything, but it was a European game and it was against. Uh, I, I hope I can pronounce this right because I never got to pronounce it. Right. Runevik hmm. or Ruvenik or whatever it was in the Faroe uh, Faroe Islands. Now uh, I'll say it from because I always want to know from the the players' perspectives because it must have been difficult for you guys because of the circumstances, especially not, not just with COVID but the the entire. Um, uh, the, I see the state of the, the match, not the performance, but it was just the weather and everything. And back, back on, we could hardly see, you know, yeah. we, could, we could hardly see any any of the match. But a lot of people were saying to me, you know, what, what was going on there? And, and, and I was there going, I, I honestly don't know. Cause <laughs> it was, it was a mixed emotions. Cause I, I knew for a fact that because of COVID, we were sort of, um, we were given it by default really, because we were in the top, Four of the, uh, the 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 Welsh Premier League or the Camry Premier, but uh, so when when you guys went to the the Faroe Islands, what was the initial thought process of going into the Faroe Islands, and what was the thought process of going into the game? Because it must have been very difficult. Yeah, well, obviously I I missed the game because um, my partner was due that week, so it was I hadn't actually signed at the time, and. Um, I, with my first side, I didn't. I just didn't think it was right to go. And if I'd missed it, then I'd be got a backhander off it. I think so. Yeah. Better I stayed on. But the initial thoughts from the boys and the staff were, were positive. You know, we were going into that game looking to win it. We were confident going into the game. Um, our preparations were as good as they could have been, considering uh, the current climate and what was going on. Um, and. The aftermath is it the boys were disappointed and they were they thought they didn't do themselves justice over there. Um I think in hindsight, if maybe we played them in the same period of uh calendar year of uh, the football season, because uh, I think they, they were maybe halfway through or ten minimum ten games into the season. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, summer football. Big, yeah. Yeah, obviously, it's a, it's a big difference when you go from um, pre-season into matches and match get your match fit. Um, and I think that was a telling factor in the game. Do you know what? I've always, I've always wanted to ask. I, I, I don't know why it's always slipped my mind every time I ask a Camry Premier player or former Camry Premier player uh, about uh, the, the, the way, uh, the approach of some football. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a fan of it. I, I don't see the initial point of it because you know you can still. There's a lot of teams that still improve by carrying on the same system of, of a season. Whereas, you know, like I can understand with the Faroe Islands because they're so far up north, you know, that they're, I mean, some of the Scandinavian countries, such as, you know, uh, Iceland, Faroe Islands, and maybe even uh, Greenland or something, they're, their weather changes rapidly. So I can understand they play their summer, their football in the summer. But have you ever been taught discussed about summer football you know just as a general topic and if um, you do... obviously not um playing over in england it, european football hadn't really crossed my mind at any stage really so it wasn't a fact that i was thinking um you know if we played in the summer we'd have a better chance and you know it was only now coming over to barry that this was a factor and um i was still unaware until we played and then uh gab mentioned there was talk of uh, summer leagues and stuff like that would be beneficial to us and when you look at it from a European perspective it would be beneficial for uh, the Welsh clubs to play in summer but then I look at like, the boys with their families and things like that holidays and time it's, it's, it could be it could go either way I think yeah especially it's difficult I mean that's the way I think of it as well because I mean don't get me wrong I can see the beneficial because all you have to do is look at point A which is the Faroe Island teams and yeah. go, well, there's your example because they're doing well. But um, the way I look at it, I just don't see if it would make any big changes, if you know what I mean. I just I just see it as a, you know, 
it would would affect some of the you know, say the players and the families because I mean the Camry Premier is only a quarter of the teams only what two or three of the teams are good are professional you know so you, you yeah. got to look at it from a semi professional stance you know that yeah. you know, the, these some of the guys I mean like like yourself and others you know they've got jobs and everything you know and you know, it's just trying to find the time and that but going on to to the very beginning of your career though you know at Cardiff City Cardiff boy you know um you were there for a few years uh, you are, you made the odd appearances in the FAW Premier Cup and league and everything what was it like to play for your home t- uh, you know your, your, the Bluebirds Cardiff City and that and uh, what was the experience like to be around I, I bet you were around the likes of Chris Gunter Aaron Ramsey uh I always wanted Stuart Fleetwood to come on uh, I mean he's got some stories and um uh, but yeah, was, yeah. But what was it like to have these guys around you? No, obviously, like, uh, Aaron Ramsey was a bit younger than me when I was a kid. If I was, I was like around the same age as like Fleet, Joe Ledley, Chris Gunter, Darcy Blake, them sort of boys, Cameron Jerome. Um, I loved it. I like make my debut for Cardiff was one of the proudest football moments of my life. You know, no, no one can take that away. Um, it didn't go to plan, but then. You know, I, no one can take that. I got my shirt in my mother's pub, um, right above the bar. So everyone knows that, you know, I made one appearance for Cardiff City. So, yeah, I'm proud of it. And that was against Coventry, wasn't it? Yeah, Coventry away. Dennis Wise's last professional game, yeah. <laughs> a little so fact for you. <laughs> it was a lovely little fact, little Dennis Wise. Um, but what, going into that game, I mean, I'm surprised it popped into my head, Coventry, because the um, uh, funny enough, I got that from Ryan Cox, who does the tannoy for... For Barry, and he's a Coventry yeah. City fan, so he actually pointed out to me. He said he played against Coventry. I just went, yeah, yeah. really? Oh, I, well, I wonder why you knew that, Mike. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when you played, when you first made your uh, your first team appearance in the league for for Cardiff City, you know, I bet there was a bit of uh, emotions running high, you know, and it was a bit of a, uh, you know, it, it's happening. I'm going to play in the league, you know. Yeah, but- d- yeah, definitely, because it was, it was a, it was me. Um, there's a couple of me, Joe Jacobson. I can't, I can't remember who else it was, but we were sort of on the fringes of the. Like, it was the last couple of games of the season. Joe made his home debut against Watford, maybe. Um, I think Darcy. It was Darcy as well. Darcy made his debut against Crew, and then it was we were the free training with the first at the time, and then it was Coventry last game, and I knew beforehand. He said I was going to be involved in the 16. So obviously, uh, my family. Half the pub in Canton uh, went up to the game. So, yeah, it was really emotional, really a good day. When you were with the likes of, you know, Darcy Blade, Chris Gunter, Joe Ledley and that, you know, do you all, do you have a specific uh, memory of being around the boys, you know, uh, any top characters there? Because I would assume, you know, Chris Gunter and Joe Ledley and Darcy would be tremendous characters, especially with uh, Joe Ledley's Twitter going Mad. <laughs> yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I nearly bought a PlayStation Five off him the other day. <laughs> Do you know what? I was I was this close to going. Hmm, is yeah. it really legit? Because I know sometimes you get a lot of people doing that social media saying, "Look, I'm selling one," but I I I'm waiting till March because I know then yeah. a lot of people are going to die down from it. But uh, and then next, you know, <laughs> Joe Lenny's going to reveal it all, <laughs> and I was like, "Yep, knew it, knew it." There was. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember showing it to my dad and he was going, what is he doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you, uh, do you hold any specific memories, you know, any um, specific moments where... Um, just No, just grow, growing up, uh, going straight from school into, into KFC as a YTS, they were easily like the best days in my life. Everyone says school is the best, but then three, four years as a YT just... Going to well, what they call work back then, going into work, training in the morning, training in the afternoon with your mates. It was just, it was just fun all the time. And especially as well, you know, um, I gotta mention when you made because you, because when I was looking into you know your career at Cardiff City, you know, you have made the uh, a few appearances. It may not be just in the in the league, but it it's in cup competitions and and. I think for the our viewers, we always got to keep in mind that uh, when Cardiff, you know, back in the day in the early 2000s, in the mid 2000s, you know, we still had the the FAW Premier Cup, which you made a few yeah. appearances, and you yeah. scored a couple of goals against 
uh, Kamada uh, Kamada, Kamada, yeah. which you would eventually go there. So what was yeah. it like to be playing against uh, Kamada in the FAW Premier Cup? And that, that ball, I, I mean, I want it back. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I want it back. <laughs> it, it's just um, oh just for the bands you know <laughs> it, it was a good experience you know it was it was it was first in football which um a cardiff at that time was, was quite limited for because back back then it was quite a big split from the first team you had then which is now like a 20 years rather reserve sort of squad but we weren't really we didn't really have anything to do with the first team back then so we were sort of just on our own and then you had the academy boys so to play in the FAW Cup, it was a mixture of first team and uh, reserve boys. So it was good um, to get to play with some of the, some of the older heads and try to teach you what they know. And yeah, it was a good experience. When you left Cardiff, did you go to? I don't know if you were straight to Carmarthen, yeah. or if you were straight. To, if you went to, I know you went to Poland. Um, yeah. And I was going to ask about your experience because what was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it MSK Swift? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Club, yeah. So, so, how did that happen from you going from Wales to to Poland? I went to uh, Kamava straight from Cardiff under Mark Age. Who I knew from playing for uh, Wales in the seventeens. He was a coach there. Um, I stayed. I, I, I won there too long. And my agent, I had an agent back then. At the time, he said, "There's not much to go over to Poland." Um, Play in this, I think they were in the second division then, um, and just experience to see what comes of it. So, you know, I, I took my chance, went over there with a friend of mine, Gianluca Palladino, who's got uh, to the Villaggio down in Wiltshire. So, um, we went over there, the two of us, for a month. Uh, it was a great experience, but unfortunately, when I was there, because I played for two, played in two countries in that year, I wasn't eligible to play. So literally, I went there for a month and I, I literally just trained. I couldn't play in any of the matches. Um, there was the option to stay over there, but I, was, I think I, I can't. I think it was like Christmas time and it was, it was like freezing balls. Like I won playing games, so I, I ended up coming home just before Christmas. Did you and ever then get from? So oh, sorry, what? no, sorry, go on. No, okay, yeah. No, I was going to say, did you ever experience, you know, any of, because I, I can understand with, um, in Poland, you know, the fan bases in Poland are just absolutely m- madness, yeah, you know, with yeah. some clubs. Did you add that at the club that you went to? Did you get to see, you know? Yeah, it was only it was only a small village, but the, the, like most places, football's the hub of, of the town and stuff like that, and they were all very wel- welcoming. Um Poland in general can get some negative press for, you know, um, different things, derogative things. But when I was there, it was, I loved it. I loved the experience. Loved the place. So when you went back to, you went, you went back, you, you went to Forest Green Rovers, which I was going to get down to. It was inevitable because yeah. you've been there a few times, especially from Bampton Farm, Forest Green Rovers to Newport and back, you know, and, uh, and there's a bit of a, a bit of a rivalry between the two. Um, but when you, how did it happen? Where, where did the transfer to Forest Green Rovers uh, occur? Um, that was it. Again, I was just an agent. He, he, he said there's opportunities to go up to Forest Green on trial. Um, so I went up under Jim Harvey. Um, I had a couple of weeks trial, I ended up signing there. Um, and yeah, that was, that, was, that was a great experience. I, to, I don't know how long I was there in total, but I think I went back on two different occasions. Um, but it was a great club to be at. And um, obviously, they've just kicked on and on since since the times have been in the conference. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just reading now. Apparently, it's seen uh, uh, four occasions. Uh, there was like once there was three for proper official signing, and then there was one on a loan because you went to yeah. Newport in 2011 only for a brief period yeah. to Newport. So uh, was that an agent thing as well going to Newport? No, Camp? no, that was. Um, um, I don't know how the, that the Newport move come about I was play I I there's a forest green I I got I signed under Jim Harvey then he left and Dave Hockaday came in um I got released under Dave and then there was a they they had an injury crisis at left back I think um and he rung me like on a on a Sunday and said would you be interested in just come and play a game on Tuesday I I, I went and played I done well I think I scored as well um, so he offered me a deal at the end of the season. Um, 
And I think I've done well that season and the start of the following season again, I've done well. Um, and Dean Holds have got in touch with me then out, out of the blue. And I think Mike Fowler at the time was moving to Newport as well. Um, and he offered me a chance to go there. Obviously, again, close to home, Welsh club. Um, I jumped at the chance. Um, it didn't work out. Dean, literally, <laughs> my first game was uh, my first or second game. He got the manager's job all the shot. Um, and then Tim Harris took over. And I just for some reason Tim didn't really fancy me, which is fair enough, you know, everyone has their opinions. So it didn't work out. I went back for a screen then. Um and that season then we I think for a screen we were in a uh, relegation battle. Um and we just stayed I think we stayed up on the last day of the season. It might have been Tamworth away. Yeah. Was it was yeah. always was it a big uh obviously of course, you know, with with relegation battles, they're always a big challenge and everything. But yeah. um when when you were at Forest Green Rovers, you know, and during the relegation battle, was there what was the what was the locker room, the changing rooms like for, for the players? Was it just all was it very focused on just trying to win matches as much as they can? Just to- Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because mm. we had a good group of boys I and mean, we we had a good good squad, you know. The, I think the year after, the, the, I think they climbed the table a bit more, and you know, from then they've gone up. That year was probably probably pivotal in um, Forest Green's history, not going down that year, staying up, and uh, obviously they kicked on. Um, but the, no relegation battles are hard. You know, you just got to stick together um, and just fight for every point, really. And I think that's what I think. In the end, I think we stayed up on goal difference. I think we might have maybe drawn a Tamworth or lost, but the team below us had, had got a worse result for us, so we were lucky enough to stay up. But obviously, it doesn't all fall down on that final day. What then? In weeks before, we ne- we got enough points just to just just to scrape staying up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, did did the club turn vegan then? Was it a vegan club then, or? Uh... Um, it, it's from, I can't remember at what point uh, Delvin's come in, but but when he come in, it. it it all started changing and went to vegan and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, I just caught the end of that. I just caught the start of it. Sorry. Yeah, because oh. they're thinking of built. Because uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's good what they're doing. It's good what he's doing for the club and everything. Because yeah. uh, I mean, I'm, I got I got nothing against you know anyone who goes vegan or anything like that. Because uh, I try doing vegan diets uh, for just for, for my health, really, not for yeah. for, not for the sake of it. But. Um, uh, you know, and it's like uh, Hector Bellerin is, is now a majority shareholder of the club now. Yeah, so it's, yeah, ab- it's, it's, ab- yeah. it's absolutely bonkers what what's happening yeah. at Forest Green Rovers. But uh, it's it's but whatever's whatever's happening, you know, it's it's happening for the best of them. You know, with uh, two, you could say multi millionaires. One's a former footballer. One's uh, you know, uh, what's what's his uh, experience? Something to do with um, ecosystem. Uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's, and, yeah, he's got. A- it was something specific, was it? But it was to do with the ecosystem, you know, how it was going to work and up. But fair play to them, you know, fair play. Do you still go and watch them if you had the chance? Do you ever go, you know what, I'm going to go and watch Forrest? No, you know? I haven't really. I'm still in, in contact with um, a bully who was a fella who he was um, on the board at the time I was there. He basically, because a lot of boys uh, travelled from either up north, like Liverpool way or Manchester way, um, and that's from Cardiff. He'd, he'd let us stay at his house. Sometimes he, he, I think he had like eight, nine boys staying on his floor for um, for training the next day. Um, but well, I'm still in contact with him. Um, I'm still in contact with a few of the boys. I'll speak to them now and again. Um, yeah. But never really get a chance to go down there. No, no. No, oh, no fair enough. Um, well, we, we can't anyway because of the COVID situation. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Moving on from club to international, you know, you, you made a few appearances at under 17, 19 and under 21s. Um, I want to talk about your under 21 career and maybe it may go go with the under 17s and 19s because I've spoken to a lot of people, uh, especially with my friend Luke Williams, who's one of my co-hosts he is for the podcast. If I can't get a guest on the show, he comes on with me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we've always, and there's uh, one or two people that, uh, we've spoken about and I've spoken to Kevin Ratcliffe as well and they, and it's very good they all had the same answer of um, especially with today's Wales squad and because you knew mo- uh, you knew majority of them it's because you've grown up with each other and that's what made it such a very uh, 
a really good side because everyone knows each other, everyone's grown up together, and that's why it's such a successful Welsh team today. When we're playing uh, for the under 21s, who was in the squad at that time? In it because it's got to be in the early what mid 2000s, early 2000s, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my 21 squad was. Uh... I think if Joe, Joe was in and around it, but I think Joe had already started pushing to be in the first team when I made my 21, Joe Ledley. Uh, David Cottrell, the same. Um, Gareth Bale hadn't really come on onto the scene then. He was, uh, he was sort of... He didn't really feature through the, the, the younger ages, like 17s, 19s. He just come on the scene and just obviously blew up um, straight into the Welsh first team. Um, Chrissy Gunter, he, he was sort of in my age, right from 17s, 19s, 21s. Um, but surprisingly, the, the, the sort of boys who you think or oh, would have would have definitely made the level who just just fallen on the waistline is yeah, it's, it's mad. Is it um, to all the games? Do you remember the games that you played in the under 21s? Were uh, and who were the teams uh, that you yeah, were I facing? Think I played against. Uh, Azerbaijan, um, uh, that was a spitty pack. Um, I think that was my. That's, is that my only? Tw- I think that's my only twenty ones actual cap. I, think I started that one. Um, I was on the bench. You said you got uh, three. <laughs> I got three of them. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I knew I definitely had one. Um, I can't think with the other one, who the other ones were against. Maybe like Estonia, maybe. I'm trying to have a look. I was on the bed. I, was, I, I, I it was weird. I used to travel quite a few times with the 21s um, when I was like sort of still in the age of like 70s and 19s, and I, I wouldn't really feature. Um, so I'd travel and be on the bench and not get on. Um, like at games against, I think we played England at uh, Racecourse, Wrexham. Um, I didn't feature in that. Um, a couple more away. I just I, I didn't feature, and obviously it was quite hard at the time because I was away from because I was playing seventies, nineties, and twenty ones all sort of at the same time. I was away from Cardiff quite a lot, um, and it's, as much as going away Wales helped, it sort of hindered me as well. So I wasn't quite in. Well, I wasn't in the first team of Cardiff. I was still in the same reserves. I wasn't getting the game time in Cardiff, not getting the game time going away with Wales. It was, it was, it was looking back on it, it was probably like you know quite tough um, times and probably maybe hindered me in, in a way. Who was the manager for the Wales under twenty one squads? Was it uh, at the time? Oh, it was it was um, Brian Flynn. Was it? Yeah, Flynn at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was he, he was... like? It... What was he like as a manager? I mean, oh, great, I, great coach, great manager, yeah. lovely guy. Yeah, I, 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 you'd struggle. I find anyone who has a bad word, just same. Yeah, so just like, his, his sort of his man management was second to none. The way he spoke to people and he could make you feel like a million dollars. He was, uh, he was top guy. Yeah, yeah. Because I speak to a lot of former. I mean, I think in the past few episodes that I've done. Uh, most of them have been former Wrexham players, and especially, you know, I've had Gareth Elwin on the show. Um, I'm getting Wayne Phillips uh, in in the future, and I've spoken to one or two more, and they've all said the same thing. They just can't say a bad word about Brian yeah. Flynn, you know, and and I, I always say, you know, he has proper Mr. Wrexham, you know, he, he's given a lot yeah. of um, good memories of Wrexham, you know, and uh, fair play. And so someone was asking me, you know, uh, uh, the, the top five guests, if I can have on the show, who would it be? And I said, oh, Brian Flynn's got to be one of them because, you know, I just, I don't care about the management and everything. Uh, the one thing I always wanted to know was was when he played um, against Yugoslavia, it was that battle in Indian Park where everything all kicked off. And, oh, and I remember yeah. looking, I remember looking at an art, article and it said that even though Brian Flynn was a tiny bloke, you know, and uh, there was a big Yugoslavian who was intimidating him and, you know, that such a height difference. He just turned around and nutted him. I just thought, <laughs> well, that is the Welshness in him. That is Brian yeah. Flynn <laughs> to a T.I. No, he'd, have, he'd, he'd, he'd definitely have some good stories for you. He'd, uh, yeah. Oh, well, so for days, so, yeah. Yeah, even I remember, um, but like I said, going on to Joe Levy would have been another one, but I remember he said, DM me. I thought, oh, should I risk it? Then I saw the, we will reveal all. And I thought, nope, <laughs> nope. No, I think his, Twitter, his Twitter's back now. I think he saw it, his Twitter out. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He, 
J- today, actually. Uh, I saw it today. Uh, oh, right, as okay, we were speaking yeah. it, but it was just just weird just having <laughs> uh, Joe Ledley becoming a uh, conspiracy theorist, like an Alex Jones kind of guy, you know? <laughs> Joe, what's going on, mate? <laughs> the only... <laughs> The only conspiracy theory is your beard. <laughs> ah, but, um, so after Forest Green Rollers, you know, you, you went to Brackley Town and there was spells at uh, Chippenham. Uh, so we ran about that point then. What was, um, what was your initial thought process going in as, you know, playing for Brackley Town and, and for Chippenham? Was it just, you know, to get as many many uh, game time as you can? Or was... No, no. I was, um, while I was at Forest Green, I was probably... I was very much a squad player at Forest Green. You know, I was one one of the first names on the list. I could be on the bench one week and then come and play the next. And it was very bit part um, for the whole time I was there, really. Um, I, was, I was told I won't get a new contract um, around like Christmas time. Uh, and then one of the boys, Luke Graham, he lived up by Brackley. And they said, he said they'd be interested in taking you on, on loan. Um to the end of the season, which I jumped at, you know, it was, although it was nearly two and a half hours away, it was still regular football, um, which I jumped at. We 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 were in the uh, the Southern Prem then, I think they were, or the Northern Prem, one of the two, um, and it was like six, seven games left of the season, which we ended up winning that league. Um, I spoke to the manager then, John Brady, and said, you know, what's, what's your... What's your opinions for next year? He said, oh, I, I generally didn't think you'd want to stay, obviously, with the South. I said, no, you know, I, I've loved my time yet. Yeah, no. I happily happily joined, in which um, I then signed the following season. And I had a good three, four years there. Yeah, loved my time there. What about, uh, I know it was only brief. Uh, it was only, I think it was a short period of time. But what about Merthyr Town, you know? How, how did that happen? Um, Merthyr was after Brackley. That was... Um, that just come from. I actually spoke to. Um, oh, what was it? Beatles number two at, at Hereford. Uh, Steve Jenkins was yeah, it? Yeah, Steve Jenkins was the manager at the time at Murphy. Um, yeah, yeah. I spoke to him, and then as of that moment, I think he left that summer after speaking to him, and I agreed to sign. He left, and Gav took over. Um, and then I spoke to Gavin, and that, that was a simple move as well. I, the, the, my time there was, I, I loved my time there. Um, one thing, because uh, it, it's a thing, you know, with the derbies with Merthyr and Barry, because, you know, you got, you got you know, Cardiff and Swansea, um, then you got a few other derbies, like with Bangor and Carnarvon, and there seems to be like yeah. a rivalry with um, Barry and, and Merthyr. And, uh, and I, think it's, I think it falls down to the point of because, you know, Back in the day, Barry moved from the English league system to, you know, the Welsh and Merthyr stayed in. And, uh, and there was always a who's better at who and everything in the competition. Um, do you, I asked, uh, who did I ask? Uh, Kerry Morgan, I asked uh, the last time. I asked him about the... He's probably should get a word in with him. <laughs> well, well he, was, he was very nice. Um, fair play to him. He was, uh, and do you know what? His, his podcast is shot up. I, I was not expecting, uh, no disrespect to Kerry. Um, uh, I thought he was a terrific guest. Um, but I, I was not expecting the, the reception that the podcast uh, got. Uh, yeah, anyone, anyone who knows Kerry knows he's, he's, he's a good talk and he'll give you some good stories. He's good listen, to listen to Kerry, to be fair. He, he was brilliant. Fair play. And, um, and I asked him, I'll probably ask you the same question as well. You know, I said, would, would Merthyr benefit uh, to all the Merthyr fans? Sorry if I keep repeating myself, you know, about asking, but it's always good to, I may do an episode by one day. But would you see the benefit of Merthyr being in the Welsh League or do you just see him, you know, trying to keep going in the English League system and see if they can hopefully be like Newport and Wrexham, you know, trying to push up there? Ooh. In your in your honest opinion, where do you see? Um, it's a tough question because you know, it's, 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 ideally they're fan owned and fan run. It's it's what the fans want really. Is if they want to play and have the opportunity to play in the Welsh League. Obviously, it's the Welsh League. From when I played in it with Carmarthen to the time I'm playing it now, it's it's, a, it's like a completely different league. So much professional. So much, so much more. The teams, everything about it is just a more professionally run league. Um, and obviously, there's 
pleasure to Murphy coming over. And probably from Murphy's perspective, there's negatives that make him want to stay in the English pyramid. Um, I, I don't know. It's a tough question. It's only I think only uh, Murphy boys could answer. I think. Yeah. No, I've I've I had this because um, with this podcast, you know, I think. Uh, one of the episodes that I want to do, I may do it for the 50th episode I do, or maybe in the future is to have a big debate about it. You know, yeah. with a, one Merth Town fan, uh, one pro Welsh League fan, and one other Barry Town yeah. fan on. Otherwise, it'll turn into like a Barry v Merth uh, kind yeah. of. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong. They'd they be, they be great for the Welsh League because their fans and their oh, support yeah. is, is, is second to none. Some of the trips we went on while I was there and we outnumbered a lot of the clubs which we went to. Um, it shows how big bigger club Murphy is, um, and I think them coming into the Welsh League would would benefit the Welsh League definitely and benefit Murphy as well. Um, but yeah, you know who knows what the future yeah. holds. Well, one of my top five games has been uh, it was Barry v Murphy, and it was the first time I ever seen it. It was a away game, and it was the first time Murphy had been in the Welsh Cup for Yonks and. Uh, and we beat him three 0 and it was just one of the best games, yeah. you know. And it was on a, it was the first of October, nice sunny day. I just thought it was a lovely day for football and fair play. It was, it was lovely. Probably not for Mirtha because you yeah. know they lost to us, but it was, it was a good one. Um, going on I think to, they could, I, think, I think they could probably benefit from um, playing each other every year in a preseason game. I don't see if the fans could uh, behave themselves. I, uh, I wouldn't see. <laughs> it, that'll be a good gate, you know. They'd be a good following from both sides, and it'd be. Oh good, yeah, good warm up for for this season. I think. Yeah, you know, I know. I, I got a, yeah, I got a lot of friends who I, I got a few friends who support Mercy. You know, and uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I've I've said this in many of my videos. I always leave my opinions to one side for the podcast. You know, because I don't want to isolate Murphy Because at the end of the day, they are a terrific club. They are a great club. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's just I always say that because of not where they've come from, but what, what's happened to them, you know, to, uh, trying to stay in the English league and it's not been the very best. I'm just, I, I feel like a more con- concerned parent, if you know, that kind of vibe, just to say, look, I- is it really worth it now? You know, it's like the, I always say they're the black knight in Monty Python where the arm gets, it's like, no, it's just a flesh wound. And it just, and it ends up just them being ahead. And I'm thinking, come on now I think it you know but it's it's up to them I always say look it's up to them it's it's down to them you know and but I would love a preseason friendly with them getting some numbers down we have so, oh that would have been a great I, I know they're preseason friendlies and sometimes they don't mean a lot but for like a good derby you know just to happen you know and yeah of course you know especially because you know the, most some of the Barry players are former Merthyr and even Gavin Chesterfield himself you know he's a former Merthyr player so uh you know I don't see anything wrong with that so i mean i'm always up for it you know and uh, yeah. i think but i think there's one or two i think there's one or two you know on both sides that are very right not yeah. not for violence but for like let's push this to the, <laughs> to the limit. push it to the limits yeah push maybe it to the, the segregation maybe yeah yeah well no, that would it, it would happen you know it, it, it yeah. generally would um going on to chippenham and another I, I think it's another club that's you know we've always Barry, I've always looked into to get some players, you know, considering I think uh, Nathaniel Jarvis, I, I, I think yeah, yeah. he came from Chippenham and um, maybe one or two others. But um, during your time at Chippenham, you know, w- what was that like to be playing for that team? And uh, I, I always wanted to go and watch him. I don't know yeah. why. I think, oh, they, they sound like a decent team. You know, I may go and watch him. But I just remember the only first time I've heard about them was when Nathaniel Jarvis was there. And because, like I said, with you and the guys all know each other, I'm thinking... Get him, just get Nathan. Nat, uh, Nat Jarvis has always been that player. I thought he, he he'll do yeah. wonders for Barry, you know. And uh, but what was your time like at Chippenham? And uh, who was who was there at that time? Um, yeah, but I Chippenham come from. Um, I was at Merth, and obviously uh, the situation happened with what went on with the um, the money troubles a couple of years ago. Um, which at the time, a lot a lot of the boys who left took a bit of stick. Um, you know, because people saying we should have stayed and stuff like that. But when you look at it, as that was my a lot of the boys, that was their main income at the time. Um, you know, I, I'm currently doing an apprenticeship to be an electrician, so my, my main income was has been coming through football. Um, so when that gets taken away from you, and um, obviously you want to stay loyal to a club, but 
you know, you need to pay for your mortgage and stuff like that. So the opportunity came. Um, it was actually Gav that got in touch with Chipman and said, you know, there's a chance for you to sign Curtis and uh, Robbie Patton at the time. Um, which came off and we both went up to Chittenham then um, halfway through the season, I think. I think, And it was the season before they won the Southern Prem. They tipped us um, that season, uh, tipped Murphy. Because that season at Murphy, we should we sh- really should have gone up. The, the, the team we had, the players we had and the squad we had, we should have gone up. Unfortunately, we just fell short. Um, so then I ended up going to Chittenham. And yeah, I enjoyed my time there too. Two, three years, it's a good experience playing in the conference itself. Uh, little cup run last year. Um, yeah, it was a good experience. I, I know we mentioned about Barry Town and, you know, how you started everything. So, um, and we, we, we ran through loads of questions and loads of topics. So it was brilliant. And thanks for coming on, you know, especially no, early, no problem. Early, early in the morning. So I blame you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's absolutely fantastic, you know, and, but, one of the things I really know, uh, want to know is, is um, of course, you know, with COVID and because the season has, has been halted a couple of times, you know, so yeah. it's not really surprising, you know, and, uh, and I, I bet some of the players, you know, ju- would just, you and the guys would probably just want to do your best in the season and just, you know, get, yeah. get the season over and done with, because it has been, I think for all clubs, have been a horrid season because of COVID. Yeah. You know? But uh, in the long term, uh, where, the, where do the players and uh, I've heard it from Gavin many times you know I know yeah. what his ambitions is but what are the players ambitions for you uh, Kane and everyone else where do you want to go do you, do you want to target the the Kerry Premier title do you want to target uh, the Welsh Cup or where, where do the players want to go what's that next step well before well, obviously last season before signing to Barry looking from the outside in it was very much Barry there or thereabouts they could be start to win and stuff. And from my conversations with Gav, he wants to be pushing to be contending for the titles and contending for cups and doing well in Europe. Um, which I I agreed with and asked what you know I I come to Bali wanting to try and win something. Um, we're just fifth, I think, at the minute, just outside the uh, top four. So we want to be you know making that split consolidating our top six and then pushing to get into Europe again and then maybe you know looking to win uh, one of the cups if they go ahead and then from from then we want to be pushing the top teams you know we we, we find ourselves in games this year like TNS away um, Connors Key away they're all there about and then just falling fall that little bit short where we want to be turning them results around and nicking points away from home and maybe even turning them over at home you know we want to be um, challenging for titles and cups. Yeah, and, and it's doable as well because you know, <clears throat> and this is a fan now. This is not me as a, you know, podcast presenter or anything. This is me as a fan now that I, I can see you and the guys. You're on levels with TNS and everything. It's just, um, you know, because with TNS and Konski, they got you know um, that bit of financial advantage, uh, as we say. But you know. Um, a lot of people always say, oh, because they got that financial advantage, you know, they're, they're going to keep progressing further. And then I'm always thinking to myself, well, no, if we get the right places, which we have got, I'm, I'm not going to doubt that because we got the likes of you, Kane, David Cottrell, you know, and Jordan Cottrell, Robbie Patton and everyone, you know, you are on par, you know, and, yeah. and, it's, and, and there's no reason for us to keep going further because the only way is, is up. And it's, it's so funny because I remember the, because the, some of my mates who are kind of supporters and everything, I, I'm just a bit dumbfounded where some of the comments were made. I remember the last time I made Brandon, uh, he said to me, so where did it go if you go, if you finish first? And I just went, <laughs> yeah, so I just went, that. I just went, <laughs> what? <laughs> what, do, yeah, what do you mean? No. It's like, we go, we go to the Champions League and it's like, yeah, but do you go into the an English league system? And I'm thinking, do, do Celtic go to the English league when they win? No, oh, yeah. did, did you ever have that? I, I bet. That's, yeah, yeah, you still get it. No, and that's, that's I think that's, the difference now with what the Welsh League was like 10, 12 years ago or even longer than that till, till now. And I think what the teams at the top, like TNS, Connors Key, um, are doing, they're, they're, you know, growing the Welsh League. The more more countries are hearing about teams in Little Old Wales and what they're doing. So hopefully that can continue and hopefully Barry can be in and around that. 
Last question for you then, Kurt, is I always ask the same question and uh, over the with players and everything, but for you is um, because you're still playing, is how, how do you look on how do you look back on your career so far, really? Um, you know, proud of all my achievements. Um, I've had ups and downs, injuries, disappointments, you know, um, getting released, highs of scoring in the FA Cup, winning FA Cup second round matches, um, representing my country, um, you know, all these different things. And all in all, it hadn't been too bad a career, you know, I'd, I've got a house out of it and a family, you know, so yeah, it's going well. And let the good times roll with Barry and hopefully... Exactly, I, yeah. Yeah, and hopefully... Um, yeah, it ain't over, yeah, that's for sure, yeah. When, it, when it's over and done with this COVID bollocks, Sorry for swearing as well, but when this is all done and dusted, I can't wait to get that, me and the boys, get that drum, support you guys and get the chance going, you know, because I think you need to hear some of the chants, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, definitely, yeah. It'd be nice to, nice to share a call in after the match as well. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Curtis, thank you so much for coming on the on the no problem. podcast. Really means a lot and uh, wish you all the very best, you know, so. No problem. So, uh Guys, that was Curtis McDonald on the Dragon's Voice podcast. Make sure you give a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I will try my very best to get as much podcast go- coming out on a weekly, every Friday. Uh, there's no time, you know, uh, slot where I release them. It's just normally in the mornings or in the afternoons that I release my podcast every Friday. So uh, make sure you tune in to the Dragon's Voice channel. Make- and again, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I've been your host, Julie Reese Deans, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.